Good evening guys, Bill with BC Pythons and today's Thursday and uh, I was going to start doing what's in the tub Thursday but I'm going to have a little secret reveal video in a couple of days so we're going to hold off on that. So tonight I wanted to talk about, I had a young man come over and visit me today. Uh, his name is Ty Bruchet and his dad. Uh, he's very knowledgeable about snakes and been following some other people on YouTube and uh, finally got to come over and see these snakes and see what they're all about and he knew a lot of stuff about them already so it's very cool to meet an enthusiastic young man like that and get him more interested in our hobby so anyway so tonight what I thought I'd talk about is racks in as you know I'm building racks myself but this is kind of an information for any rack and had to do nothing with my rack personally or anybody else's. They're all great. Some are fantastic, and I'm just a little guy. Uh, but anyway, what I want to talk about is using the racks. So there's a lot of people just picked up racks from me, and I uh, wanted to highlight a few of the instructions you should be following. What everybody doesn't know is the heat tape located in the back actually has a little wattage label on them. You'll see on one side it'll say, I believe the six inch is like 12 watts per foot. Obviously, longer run, you're going to use more wattage. A short run, like this one, is about two foot. Basically, we'll use 24 watts. You know that. And we all know our controllers, like my VE 100s and 200s I use, and I have some other smaller ones too, we'll put out way more than that. So, a little secret to let you in on is you can plug a surge protector into the back of your VE 100 or 200 and you can run multiple racks off of one system. Now I run uh, a backup power system first plugged into the wall and then my controllers are plugged into that backup power battery thing down here in the little corner down here. So uh, that way in a bit of a power outage my racks stay on and run. So. So that was the first thing I wanted to share with you, that you didn't need a controller for each and every rack. Yes, you know, you may get a little better heat, but I can pull open one of these drawers and the back temperature is going to be mid 80s on the upper end, 84 to 87 degrees on each one of these racks. And of course, you have to adjust that with each controller. And another thing, when you put your sensors in, I drill a hole in the back, run the sensor about mid-level of any of the racks. And lay it across in the middle of your heat tape. And while I got these tubs out, I'll bring up another one. Um, Young man picked up a couple racks from me and I forgot to tell him to make sure he drilled some more holes in the tubs. So there's plenty enough air gap. It's not going to suffocate your animal, but well, we all know to increase the airflow in the tubs. So I had one drilled for him in there and I wanted to remind him to go ahead and drill some more. In the future, I'm going to try to have them all done and drilled and all that. So. And also for hatchling racks, when you're dealing with smaller hatchlings and stuff, uh, I've had a few people ask me what type of bedding. A plain old white paper towel is about the best you can get because they're a hatchling and just like a little baby human, you're going to go through some bedding and some diapers. Um, seems like these little guys just, you know. 
So, anyway, and if anything else gets on there, it's up on the clean, pull the tub out, wash it in any dye or chemical free dishwashing liquid, a couple of drops, and you're good to go. So, hope everybody's having a great week. Had an awesome time at our first show. Met some really cool people, and uh, I'd give a shout out again to my buddy, uh, the bug guy, Jay. And uh, Creation's finest uh, mounted bugs that he has are pretty awesome. Go check him out on Facebook. Um, I did pick up a few more things, and like I said, I'm going to be doing a reveal video on those or unbagging, but I've got them into quarantine right now. So, oh, oops, I gave it away, didn't I? Uh, so, anyway. Um, and that's what I had. And if anybody has any questions on the racks or tubs and uh, any suggestions or anything like that, feel free to comment below and let me know if you got any questions and I'll do my best to answer them. And uh, we're at 230-something subscribers, so we're getting closer to that 250. And don't forget, if you're a new subscriber, uh, you need to go and comment on that official 250 video where you can comment on that video in the comment section because that's what the randomizer is going to pick the winner from. So we're getting close. And uh, until the next video, that's about all I have for today. And I hope I give you a little bits of information about racks and it goes for any rack system um, just to let you know. And, oh, while we're talking about it, <clears throat> I had a couple people ask me what's the difference between uh, rear heat and belly heat. It's really a matter of preference, to be honest with you. The belly heat, you're going to use a lot more heat tape. Thus, you're going to use a lot more wattage. Um, personally, I like the rear heat. Um, just... I'm, that's what I started out using, and I've heard good things and bad things both ways. So it really doesn't make a difference, I don't think. Uh, but I personally prefer the back heat. I think the belly heat is good if you have an open type rack system um, where it's, you know, the sides are open and it's just a hard plastic tub, then you can get the belly heat close to the tub without touching it. But when you're building an enclosed rack, the heat's going to stay in there and it's going to dissipate the heat out into the tub good and creates a, a good cool zone in the front. It'll be in the 70s and the back will be in the 80s. And so far, uh, the only animal knock on some wood shelves that I can find the only animal that I've ever had R.I. with was Kylo, and he's in the fish tank, which fish tanks are not for snakes. So, and as you know, the snakes are very picky about their surroundings, so that's why I haven't moved him into a new enclosure or a tub yet. So, it's coming. Because, uh, oh yeah, we witnessed our... Second and third lock. We got a picture of the third lock. I'm going to try to put some of those up between my uh, Calico girl. She's 2200 grams, by the way. And my banana coral glow male. So they've locked up officially. Uh, witnessed three locks now. So, and that's just in the couple times that I've actually witnessed a visual lock on them. So, a couple more and I think we will uh, see what happens. So anyway, hope everybody has a great night. We've had a great week here, and fun to see everybody, and look forward to that reveal video.